Welcome, YouTubers, to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In today's video, there will be six practice test questions assessing your knowledge of simple and compound probability, which are topics that sometimes show up in the arithmetic reasoning subtest of the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, that is the ASVAB, as well as the pre-screening internet-delivered computer adaptive test, that is the PICATS. In order to get the most out of this video, you'll want to pause the video after I read a question, attempt to work out the question on your own, and then resume playing the video to check your solution. As a reminder, you're not permitted to use a reference sheet or a calculator on the actual ASVAB or PICAT, so try not to use any of those resources as you work through these practice test questions. In addition, I want to mention this. More often than not, you're only going to have to understand simple probability for the ASVAB, and as it happens, the first five practice test questions in this video are all about simple probability. Uh, so in other words, if you answer four or five of these questions correctly, you should be fine when you take the actual test. Uh, that said, I also want to mention this. I've recently noticed that some tutors may be going through my free videos, uh, rewriting some of my questions, and then posting those questions in an effort to get you to sign up for tutoring services and online boot camps. I'm going to say this point blank. Everything you need to pass the ASVAB and PICAT is available for free on my YouTube channel. Uh, so in other words, uh, if you don't answer most of these questions correctly, I would recommend that you find my video on basic probability, which I uploaded on August 12, 2020. And in addition, I'd recommend that you check out the following playlist on my channel. I'd recommend that you check out my playlist called A Review of the Basic Math Concepts for the ASVAB and PICAT. And as you can see, my video on probability is in that playlist. I would also recommend that you check out my Algebra Review for the ASVAB and PICAT playlist, my Geometry Review for the ASVAB and PICAT playlist, and finally, my Math Boot Camp uh, for the ASVAB and PICAT which currently has uh, about 750 practice test questions in it. Of course, I'll put links to all those playlists in the description of this video, and all of those resources are completely free. In case you're wondering, I pulled all of these questions from the practice test on my free website, as well as from some of the practice tests I've recently uploaded to my YouTube channel. So for that reason, uh, you're gonna notice that these questions are out of order. Guys, unlike these expensive ASVAB tutors, I'm not trying to sell you anything. All I ask is that if you find my content helpful, you consider one, subscribing to my channel, and two, uh, you also consider sharing links to my videos with other people. And with all those things being said, uh, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Right, so uh, number one here says, there are 10 marbles in a bag, Four are blue and six are red. What is the probability that a blue marble randomly gets picked from the bag? All right, so this is a problem testing your knowledge of very basic probability. And here's what you have to understand about that. We're looking for the probability, our P, of selecting a blue marble from the bag. And the way we're going to figure that out is we're going to take the number of blue marbles in the bag. And we're going to divide that by the total number of marbles in the bag. And as it happens, this math is very easy to do. Uh, how many blue marbles are there in the bag? There are four. And how many marbles are there in this bag in total? Well, according to the problem, there are four blue ones and six red ones. So that means that there are 10 marbles in the bag in total. So the odds of picking a blue one are four out of 10. And unfortunately, we don't see that as one of our answer choices. So that should prompt you to come back to your answer here and think about simplifying it as much as possible. And you should recognize in this case that both 4 and 10 are divisible by a common factor of 2. Of course, 4 divided by 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 
And of course, that's answer choice A. In other words, the probability of selecting a blue marble from a bag that contains four blue marbles and six red marbles is two out of five. Number 16 says, what is the probability of getting an odd number when a six-sided die is rolled once? All right, so if it's helpful, you can quickly draw out the faces of a six-sided die. Again, we're going to have six faces, or six sides of the dice, if you will. And uh, you may recall that on the first face, you have a one then you have a two that looks like that. Then you have a three. Then you have a four. Then you have a five. And then you have a six. Of these, which numbers are odd? Well, one is odd, uh, three is odd, and five is odd. All right, so we're gonna have to use some knowledge of basic probability to figure this one out. Specifically, we're going to say the probability of rolling uh, an odd number, which I'm going to call probability of O, is, again, if we look on my reference sheet, we can see that that's going to be the desired outcome divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Well, uh, how many ways can we achieve our desired outcome? Well, as it happens, there are three die faces that are odd, so that's going to be three. And how many die faces are there in total? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so the probability of rolling an odd number uh, is three over six, which you should know can be reduced by a common factor of three. Three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. So the probability of rolling an odd number is simply one half, which we can see as B. I have a video on basic probability. And I will say this, uh, probability can be a very challenging topic. So if you see something regarding advanced probability on the test, number one, realize that you're probably doing pretty well on the test. And two, realize that probability in and of itself is pretty challenging. So if you have to guess on a probability question, that's one I would guess on. Number seven says the following colors of M&Ms are placed in a bowl, four yellow, six orange, three green, five blue, and two brown. If you close your eyes and randomly select one from the bowl, what is the probability that you select a brown one? So on my reference sheet, as well as my YouTube channel, I have some notes and a video in regard to calculating basic probability. And on my reference sheet and in that video, I say the probability of event A occurring is equal to the number of ways that desired outcome can occur divided by the total number of ways outcomes can occur. So in this case, we want to find the probability of selecting a brown M&M. How many brown M&Ms are there? There are two. So the probability of that desired outcome occurring is two. Well, how many total possible outcomes are there? Well, there's four plus six plus three plus five plus two. This says your odds of picking a brown uh, M&M are two divided by how many M&Ms there are in the bowl. So this becomes two over, and let's do this math right here. We have four plus six, which is 10, plus three is 13, 13 plus 5 is 18, uh, plus 2 is 20. So this is 2 over 20. And 2 divided by 20 is the same as 1 tenth. Again, 2 is divisible by 2, and 20 is divisible by 2. So that reduces to 1 tenth. All right, so your odds of picking a brown M&M from this bowl are 1 out of 10. Number 7 says the probability of drawing a blue marble from a bag of marbles is 1 over 20. And the probability of drawing a red marble from the same bag of marbles is 7 over 20. What is the probability of drawing either a blue or a red marble from the bag? All right, so in this case, the question's testing your knowledge of some basic probability. And if you look closely on my reference sheet, you should notice that I have some notes about some uh, basic probability rules you should know for this test. 
One of them says this, the probability of picking A or B is simply the probability of picking A plus the probability of picking B. That is to say, you add their probabilities together. Well, that's exactly what we have in this case. In this case, we want to know what our probability of picking a red or a blue marble is from the same bag. So that's going to be the probability of picking a red marble by itself plus the probability of picking a blue marble by itself. And as it happens, uh, this problem told us what those probabilities were. It says the probability of picking a blue marble is 1 over 20. So let's go ahead and replace that right here. Again, the probability of picking a blue marble is 1 over 20. Likewise, the problem tells us the probability of picking a red marble is 7 over 20. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. All right. So in other words, the probability of picking a red or blue marble is simply 7 over 20 plus 1 over 20. Uh, again, we're adding fractions here. And as it happens, they have the same denominator. So this is going to become 7 plus 1 over 20. 7 plus 1, of course, is 8. So this is 8 over 20. And uh, if we look through our answer choices, you may notice that 8 over 20 isn't there. And that's because we can actually simplify this. Uh, both 8 and 20 have a common factor of 4. So we can simplify this by dividing 8 as well as 20 by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 20 divided by 4 is 5. So the probability of picking a red or a blue marble is A, 2 fifths. Uh, number 10 here says the letters that form the word algebra are placed into a bowl. What is the probability of choosing a letter other than A? So in other words, what is the probability of not picking A? So um, on my reference sheet, which you can find on my website, I do have some basic rules that you have to understand regarding probability. And uh, we're going to use one of those rules in just a minute here. But that said, I want to copy this word down here. We have the word algebra. And whenever you're dealing with probability, you always want to know what your total sample size is. Uh, and if we go ahead and uh, count the number of letters in algebra, we can figure that out. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters in the word algebra. All right. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and talk about uh, some basic probability that we need to know to figure this one out. Again, we're trying to find the probability of not picking an A. Well, if you look on that reference sheet, it's going to be 1 minus the probability of picking A. All right, so let's go ahead and work this out. What is the probability of picking A? In other words, if you reach your hand into that bowl, what is the odds, or what are the odds, that you're going to grab the letter A? Well, again, there are seven total letters in that bowl, and two of them happen to be A's. All right, so your odds of picking A are 2 over 7. That said, we want to know the odds of not picking A. So this becomes 1 minus uh, 2 over 7. Again, we want to express this 1 as a fraction such that we can perform this subtraction here. And that's actually pretty, to do, pretty easy to do. 1 we can write as 7 over 7. What is 7 divided by 7? Well, it's 1. So this becomes 7 over 7 minus 2 over 7. And since we're subtracting fractions, our base is not going to change. 7 minus 2 is 5. So your odds of picking a letter other than A, or not A, are 5 over 7. Again, some very basic uh, probability there. On the ASVAB, I don't think it gets much more difficult than that. Number 6, as you can see, says a six-sided die is rolled two times in a row. What is the probability of not rolling a 6 both times? All right, so if it's helpful, uh, you can quickly sketch out the faces of this six-sided die. Again, the faces of the die look like this. We have one face that has a 1 on it. We have another face that has a 2 on it. We have a third face with a 3 on it. 
we have a fourth face that has four that looks like that. Then we have a fifth face that kind of looks like this. And then finally, this die has a sixth face that looks like this. All right, so now that we have the faces of the die in our mind, let's go ahead and break this advanced probability problem down into simpler pieces. On my reference sheet on my website, you'll see that I have some notes about basic probability. And it says this, the probability of not A is equal to 1 minus the probability that it is A. Now you're probably saying to yourself, how does this apply to this word problem? And let's go ahead and rephr rephrase this word problem such that it does. Imagine if this word problem said, what is the probability of not rolling a six one time? That would be this. What is the probability of not rolling a six? That would be equal to one minus the probability that you do roll a six. And that's pretty easy to figure out. One minus the probability that we do roll a six. Well, when we roll this dice once, there are six possible outcomes in total, and only one of those is a six. So the probability of rolling a six is one over six. Of course, the probability of not rolling a six is one minus one over six. You should know that one minus one over six is five six. Uh, since you can write 1 as 6 over 6, again, 6 divided by 6 is 1, minus 1 over 6 equals 5 over 6. So in other words, if you rolled this dice once, the probability that you did not roll a 6 would be 5 over 6. All right, so this problem is a little bit more advanced than that because we're told that uh, this dice was rolled two times. So we actually have to use another general rule of probability to take this one step further. Notably this, the probability of A and B occurring together is the probability of A times the probability of B. Well, in this case, we're trying to figure out the probability of not rolling a six and the probability of not rolling a six again. And that's gonna be the probability of not rolling a six times the probability of not rolling a six. And did we already figure out what the probability of not rolling a six is? We did, it's right here. Probability of not rolling a six is five over six. So this simply becomes five over six times five over six. And when you multiply two fractions, you simply just multiply straight across. Uh, this becomes five times five over six times six. Five times five is 25. Six times six is 36. So the probability, in other words, of not rolling a six two times in a row is 25 over 36 which we can see is answer choice B. All right, so that is it for this video. As always, I hope you found it helpful. And as usual, you're more than welcome to leave feedback in the comment section below. If you want to help my channel out, uh, please consider subscribing to it. As I said at the beginning of this video, everything you need to study for and ultimately pass the ASVAB and PICAT is available for free on my YouTube channel. And in addition, I put links to all those resources in the description of this video. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut you loose. Konnichiwa.